and welcome to another poorly timed episode of We <laughs> Only Look Thin. I am Katherine Weigel. I'm one of your hosts. I have lost about 145 pounds. And with me today, as always, is Donald Weigel. And uh, I have lost about 100 pounds. Perfect and timing. I timed it poorly or <laughs> something. I don't know. Uh, so we have uh, we have unfortunately timed the recording of this along with leaf blowers happening in our neighborhood. So you yeah. may get some of that in the background. Yeah, our neighborhood. Uh, sometimes we have circumstances out of our control, but instead of eating about it, yeah. we're podcasting about it. Yeah. So we might uh, have to stop. We might have to start. Uh, but uh, we're going to give it a go. See how the sound works out on this episode of We Only Look Thin. Yes, let's hope that the leaf blowers aren't too distracting from the amazing content <laughs> that you are about to receive well, through your ears. Well, sometimes, uh, just like this episode might have to be, yeah, we're going to talk about starting over. Oh, yeah. Starting over. Yeah, uh, I like how you tied that in. Well, you know what? Oh, and there goes an airplane. See, it's all all the sounds of the neighborhood are happening right at us right now. But, yeah, we're um, going to get like uh, like trucks coming through and steamrollers and someone will start a yeah. chainsaw for some reason. For yeah. sure. We actually went, uh, we went out of town for a couple of days uh, into the countryside uh, of California. And speaking of, of quiet nature sounds, yeah. there was a guy with an ATV across the street from where we were staying. It's beautiful, quiet you know, yeah. pastoral setting, and then suddenly he had to. It was as though he had to ride the ATV because it would go feral or something. Yeah, if he I didn't know. Ride it four it, times it was a like day. about every every couple of hours, like the <laughs> like <laughs> punching <laughs> the numbers on Lost, or else the island was going to explode. Uh, like if he didn't start up the ATV, <laughs> it's like oh, so it's so quiet, it's so beautiful. The birds are chirping. So then the uh, the ATV was going on, and then. Of course, there was the chainsaw. Someone had to chainsaw the nature for yeah. some reason on a yeah. on a day, but uh, it was still beautiful. Chainsaw nature. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There were just like fields. Do you chainsaw fields? Yeah, I guess it was I a don't tree know. or something. Maybe maybe someone was chainsawing the ATV. Oh, that would have been good. It sure would. But yeah. uh, but it, we still managed to have a pleasant time. We really we? did. Yes, we did. We sure did. Uh, but uh, okay, so I don't hear any leaf blowers right now, which is no, pretty amazing. No, let's uh, let's let's get as far as we can while the getting's good. Uh, so if you have been living through the last eighteen months or so, you might have been aware that there have been some setbacks in the world. <laughs> and if you haven't been living through the last eighteen <laughs> months or so, I want to know how you're listening to this podcast. What? <laughs> Why is everyone wearing masks? I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, but we have all uh, been through a lot. There, let's just, I'll take a moment. Let's take five seconds that to about, think about, that about sums the it up. things we've been through. Um, but many of us have experienced some setbacks in our health goals. I know uh, we have been thankfully, you know, pretty self-contained uh, thanks to our emotional bunker yeah. that we've put ourselves in in the last year and a half. Um, but a lot of people have experienced some weight loss setbacks. Uh, we have done other episodes on setbacks before, but recently in Walt Place, We Only Look Thin Place, our Facebook accountability group, we did a uh, Zoom meeting about starting over again after a setback. And it's important to know that so many people experience setbacks setbacks. Donald and I spent four decades managing weight loss setbacks. Yeah, I mean, even even, you know, well before there was a global pandemic, I managed to have many, many setbacks that had nothing to do with, oh my the, gosh. <laughs> with that. I mean, I I, th I'm, I know I've said it on the show before, but I lost 50 pounds two other times before I lost 100 pounds yeah. this time. And I did not keep it off either of those other times. Well, it's funny to be well, it's not funny, but I was mentioning uh, becoming parents and sort of saying what a, a terrible time I had, you know, not eating scraps off of our daughter's plate and that yeah. kind of thing. And then I was like, you know what? I had really bad weight issues way before I was a parent. So oh, yeah. blaming it on parenthood is a cheap shot because yeah, yeah. I had many problems before that. Yeah, for sure. So if you're listening to this episode, uh, thank you. Thank you for coming today. But it might mean that you, one, care about your health. So yay, that's a first awesome step. But it also means that something might be out of balance. Um, it can feel really discouraging when we've had a success. Maybe we've even been public about it on, yeah. the, on the internets. Um, I know I remember before the internet, before Mark Zuckerberg was born, 
Lauren. <laughs> I uh, sent an email on the AOLs to yeah. my family saying that I had lost uh, I had lost 100 pounds on Atkins. I was fixed. I was a new person. I was never going back. And then I went back. Yeah, I gained I mean, 75 pounds. Those other couple of times when I lost the big chunk of weight, I really thought I had it all figured out. And I thought I had it together. And, you know, there was just this this sort of hubris involved with with thinking that I was fixed and that I was done and that I didn't really have to pay super close attention anymore to what I was doing and that I would just like I was a thin person now and so I was just going to remain a thin person and you know it spoiler alert when you stop doing the oh habits that you were doing before the result is that you start gaining the weight again. Well, and I think I definitely had this, okay, I'm done now. And the big fundamental change now is that we never think we're fixed. You know, I know what I am capable of. I know what my mouth is capable of. I know what my brain is capable of. And it is a constant maintenance. That's what maintenance is. It's not, I'm done, goodbye. Like I used to see people at Weight Watchers meetings who looked thin. I'm like, go run free. You don't need to be here anymore. And now I realize more than ever that staying present in your choices, staying accountable and following your habits really does matter. You know, we had a lot of of ego to, oh to start this podcast three oh and a half gosh. years ago, like thinking that we really had it all together. It turned out we were we were good and we were giving good advice and that it like really worked out. But you know, it it really felt different though. Yeah, you know, but back then. But we also knew that we needed a podcast to talk about all of the things that we right. knew tripped us up in the past. And I think I haven't listened to our earlier episodes in a very long time. I kind of cringe to think at the uh the the sound quality, but I remember us saying in our opener like we want to maintain this weight loss and this podcast is to help us maintain that because we don't want to not look thin anymore. Yeah, and you know, we also figured out that this time was different. And and we knew that because we took all of the mistakes that we had made in the past and learned from them. Like looking back on everything was a learning experience. And we've talked before about, you know, sort of being a scientist in your own life. And rather than, you know, beating ourselves up about all of the mistakes that we've made, we learn from them and made changes based upon them. And so I knew this time that it was way different than those other times. I didn't just get down to a certain weight and then and then stop paying attention or, you know, start doing the old habits again. I knew that I had to keep doing this and and keep going and going because there was no finish line. But that being said, too, I think that there is a, you know, a, a clarity of purpose when you first get to that number. Like right. when I hit that goal number, it was like, here I am, I've arrived, it's happened. But then the farther you get away from it, I've been maintaining for four years and I'm glad we have those old episodes so that we can go back and listen and remember what it was like back then because I forget all of the things that I did back to lose the weight. I actually, I take a lot of pictures. I don't know if you know (laughs) it. Snaps Weigel is what they call me. Yes, yes, we do call you that. But I was looking at old food photos that I had taken. I take lots of food photos, just letting you know. And I was looking back at the food that I was eating five years ago when I was losing. Not very many carbs, yeah. Like Donald had diabetes at the time <laughs> and he wasn't yes. eating any bread. And so I wasn't eating any bread. And I'm looking at all my old photos and it was very protein heavy, very vegetable and fruit heavy. And now I'm noticing that there are a lot more carbs in the food that I'm eating now. Yeah. And that's a very subtle difference. But I'm up about five to 10 pounds from my lowest four years ago, which I've been like maintaining and present in and I'm not going over a certain amount. There's a there's a little bit of wiggle room. But going back and looking and being like, oh, yeah, I really didn't have carbs or alcohol and my sugar intake was a lot less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of a, a reminder of what is possible when you change your food habits. So one of the things that that we're suggesting here is that you if you have had some success in the past and you're you're at a point where you're starting over is look back on your life and figure out what changed you know what were you doing 
at that time? What time of life were you in? What season of your life were you in when you were you were staying on track and and really you know sticking to a plan? And then what changed? Why did you go off of it? Well, and I I think we can forget because, like I said, those subtle changes in life we can forget. Like, oh yeah, well, COVID happened, but that really shouldn't have changed anything. Oh, except that I stopped going to the gym and I was at home all the time, right? And stress eating and whatever. But really, you know, paying attention, looking at you know the calendar. Did you have a life circumstance change since you lost weight and maybe have regained? Did a job change? Did someone, did your health or someone else's health change? Was there a big financial shift? Was there some hardship? Did you move? Was there a family crisis either within your home or outside of your home? I don't know. Was there, you know, last year, 2020? I don't have to say anything more. Just fill in the blanks. There's a couple things happened last year. Right, right. You know, or did you just slip a little and then a lot? Donald wanted to bring up an episode that we did many moons ago. Yeah, we did an episode uh, called Breaking Bad. And the, you know, it was sort of based on the idea of that TV show. And, you know, the spoiler alert for Breaking Bad, if if you haven't watched it and have been meaning to, but at the beginning of of that show, the, the main character kind of does some morally questionable things, but you're like, okay, it's fine. You know, I get it. Yeah, he's doing it for a good reason. And then throughout the course of the show, Like he does more and more and more morally questionable things. And as an audience member, I sort of like I would go with it every time because it was just it was like it would escalate it in such gentle, small steps. And then suddenly you realize at the end that he's the bad guy. (laughs) Yeah. And he's the, you know, drug kingpin, murderer, whatever. And we empathize and then we empathize. And then suddenly we find ourselves emotionally and physically 40, 50 pounds up on the scale and wonder how it happened because it erodes, you know, that the like, oh, it's just one meal out. Oh, it's just one takeout meal. Oh, I stopped going to the gym. Oh, I stopped doing yoga. These little tiny things change and erode. And then suddenly we wonder how we got back up the scale. Yeah, yeah. You're just gently like letting go of habit after habit after habit and not even realizing that it's happening and until suddenly all of the weight has come back and more, which is what happened to me, like, you know, a couple of times, at least a couple of times. And, you know, on top of the fact that I lost the 50 pounds a couple of times, I I probably lost 10, 15, 20 pounds, you know, dozens of times yeah. and then allowed it all to come back. So it's it's that sort of gentle erosion of habits that is one of the things that you really have to watch out for. Well, and two, we did an episode called Canary in a Coal Mine, which is sort of those warning signals that things might be eroding. For example, you stop tracking, you stop tracking on weekends, you start adding bread, you know, carbs back into your diet, you stop getting on the scale, you stop going to the gym, like all these little tiny things that don't really seem to add up. I actually, I don't know if you know this or not, I was looking at my, uh, my Fitbit and my weight tracker yeah, and realized I went like three weeks without logging my weight. Ah. Guess what happened? Yeah. Yes. I was up like four pounds this month. Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. Lots of different <laughs> things happened, but we'll, we'll talk more about uh, what happened a little bit later, but really like paying attention to those little micro habits that actually add up and matter because when I start avoiding the scale. Yeah. You, like, you know oh, that like you're just trying to like avoid bad news. But I didn't even really pay attention. I was like, oh, right. I'm out of town. Oh, I'll weigh myself next week. Da, da, da. And then suddenly I'm up. Oh, well, how did it happen? I don't even know. And to slightly change the subject a little bit, maybe what the problem was, was the plan that you were on. Maybe what you were doing was just not sustainable. Oh, for sure. No, I mean, I think that whole thing of like, were you coming in hot? You know, I see, I still see that a lot of times where people get suddenly super motivated. They decide they're joining a new plan. They join the thing and it's all encompassing. And then they get a flat tire and their car's in the shop and then it's over. And then I'll start in the fall. Yeah. Was that something that you experienced? Yeah. And like I, I did a few times in my life, I did Atkins, which is now called keto. I don't know if there's a difference between Atkins and keto, but as far as I know, they were the same thing. And I did that for a long time. And it, the entire time I was doing it, it really felt like I was white knuckling it. There were things that I liked about that plan, but there was 
always going to be a time, in hindsight, there was just always going to be a time when I wanted to eat some carbs again. And it just wasn't something I was going to be able to do forever and ever. And as soon as I started eating the carbs again, the weight came back. I just couldn't keep doing it. Well, and that ties into having unrealistic expectations. For me, I know doing Atkins, you know, I I had a lot of success with it. And then I decided to kind of transfer over and do Weight Watchers. And then my results kind of changed and slowed down. So do you have unrealistic expectations? I can't tell you how many times I did spreadsheets of, I joined Weight Watchers, I lost five pounds the first week. Amazing. So if I just lose five pounds a week for 20 weeks, I'll be at my goal weight and then it'll be awesome. But then suddenly the next week you lose one pound or then you're up a pound and then your expectations are ruined and this isn't working for me and I'm broken and I'm just going to quit. Well, and the thing that people do all the time that drives me crazy, and I probably did this as well, is that they will get on a plan and that they will expect that they're going to lose, I don't know what, I don't know what they expect, five pounds a week, you know, or that that it's going to take them three months to get done. And instead, they lose a half a pound a week or a pound a week or, or you know, something very reasonable. And they do this thing where, well, this weight loss is too slow. Yeah. So I'm just going to do nothing. Yeah. Which which makes no sense at all to me. Uh, You know, you're losing weight if you just keep going. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter if it takes two years or five years or whatever it takes. If you get there and you can stay there, imagine how happy you will be at that point. It doesn't matter that it's taking too long. So it's taking too long. So you're just going to do nothing. Which like, then results in weight gain. Yeah, which results in it never happening. It just doesn't make any sense to me at all. But we've been there. So it's oh, not, yeah. you know, it's not not judgment, just understanding. But then finally, for me, the, the last question is, did you ask too much of yourself? I can't tell you how many plans I've done where it's, I'm going to send you a meal plan and this is what you need to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and choose from these categories. I spent so many times trying to fit myself into a plan that didn't actually fit with my lifestyle. I make semi-homemade food. I eat a lot of packaged foods. I do some like half fresh, half packaged situation. And when I get a meal plan that's like, okay, well, cottage cheese morning, noon, and night. I don't like cottage cheese. Donald does. <laughs> great for him. Super great with yeah, the cottage cheese. I eat cottage cheese almost every day. <laughs> but all these plans that have these weird, like, eat a soba noodle. What is that? I don't even know what a soba noodle is. Yeah. If you know what a soba noodle is, let us know. <laughs> but, let us know. We only look thin at gmail.com. But all of these plans that had me fitting into what they do, the minute I would go back into just eating my normal food, I would gain weight again. We worked out with a personal trainer who had us eating, like, literally like 10 almonds in the morning and 15 blueberries. And that's not the way a normal human eats. No, no. And there was no way I was going to be able to do that forever. And I know you said finally, and that this was Uh -uh. the last part of this you wanted to mention, but I also wanted to bring up that there have been times in my life where I felt super motivated and I found a new plan and I got really (sighs) excited and I came in really hot and then I burned out quickly. And we did an episode called Coming in Hot, and we've talked about it uh, a bunch of times. But just that like, really, you know, there's an old saying something along the lines of like, nobody is more enthusiastic than the recently converted or something like that. And I would get super excited and I would work super hard and feel like this is it. I've done it. I've done it. And then there's no way I could sustain that level of enthusiasm and, and that level of drive and, and, you know, all of that hard work all the time. It just wasn't going to be possible. I know if you are listening to this and feeling motivated right now, amazing. But yeah. also what is more amazing is just doing habits for without sure. Without the motivation. That is where the magic comes in. I'm not motivated. Okay, guess what? I'm not super motivated, but I have the momentum. I have the momentum day by day to follow the same habits and get it done. If we wait for motivation, we are going to be sorely, sorely disappointed because it is fleeting and it is unreliable. Absolutely. And, you know, I 
also do not feel motivated to do this, but I do know that if I stop doing the habits, I know what's going to happen. So it's sort of this almost fear of the negative consequences, which maybe is, you know, has a little bit of a negative connotation, but it's not really motivation that keeps me going. It's the idea that I don't want to go back to the way things were. Well, and I think, I I can't remember, we've we've talked about so many different things. This ties into failure being feedback. You know, I know what happens when I stop tracking, when I stop getting on the scale, when I go back to those old habits, even a weekend away. We've talked about this on recent episodes about vacations. I can gain five pounds in a week. Yeah. And that failure is immediate. Like, I remember what happens when I stop. And so I think for us, it's that like, okay, well, I'm not motivated today, but I sure know what's going to happen if I decide that I've got to wait for motivation. Yeah, like I, I allowed Father's Day and our our brief trip away to to end up being like a four day like eat whatever I wanted thing, and I, even though I got right back on my plan after that, I I put on two and a half pounds in that amount of time, and I knew you know I knew what I was doing, but you know now it's like I'm in air quotes paying the price. I I need to get back you know, and I have gotten back on track because I know if I keep doing that, it it will just keep happening. Well, and it's one thing to go away for a little mini break and take a little time off. And we know what's going to happen. We're not, you know, we know if we eat more cheese and crackers, we know what is going to happen to us. Taking two or three days is one thing. In the past, we would have said, Labor Day. Like, let's just wait until this season is over and we'll get back on track. And the caloric impact of that and the scale impact of that is more than we are willing to pay. So when you're trying to get back on track, something that can also be really distracting is toxic nostalgia. Oh my goodness, that, yes. You know, it thinking about the past is amazing when it feels positive and uplifting, but when we are angry about the past, oh, it was easier to lose weight back then. Yeah. Like, oh, it feels really hard now. I never had a weight problem before, and now suddenly I can't seem to, like, manage it. Oh, I'm going through perimenopause. Like, it's not fair. Everything seems harder. I can't have enough, you know, as many calories now as I did then. Also, it was easier when I just didn't care. Do you remember how much fun we had (laughs) when we didn't care about our weight? Yeah. How much we drank and we ate and we went out to eat and we slept all the time? How relaxing and enjoyable was that? No, it was super fun until I got a diabetes diagnosis and realized that I was like constantly having to take naps because of my blood sugar problems that I was having all the time. And, you know, it really was, was really ruining the quality of my life and it wasn't until looking back on it and afterwards that I realized that hey things are actually much better now but I looked back on that with a sort of fond toxic nostalgia yeah it, there were no consequences back then until there were consequences until there were major consequences well and look I know some people get really annoyed with us for talking about diabetes all the time and you know joint pain but we're getting older and it actually does matter and until you know I mean Donald I don't even know if we've really talked about this too much you had a a heart situation back in the early 2000s yeah and it was weight related and for a little while you like lost some weight and we were kind of we were being really heart healthy yeah it for for whatever reason that didn't even snap me out of it and i know that this happens to a lot of people for a lot of people a diabetes diagnosis doesn't snap anybody out of anything and you know for whatever reason my doctor looking me in the face and saying like you could go blind you could lose a limb like from diabetes really hit home and i I uh, didn't immediately make changes, but that was that was a really sobering awakening of the consequences that can happen when you just don't care and just don't do anything. Well, I think, too, people say like, oh, well, if I get diabetes, I'll have to take medication. Like, OK, well, you know, people take medication. It's fine. Right. But- actually, like the foot coming off. Yeah. Is a much bigger like. 
uh, three-dimensional impact right. of that. Like, that was a big wake-up for sure. Absolutely. And, you know, another part of toxic nostalgia is is looking back. Like, I, you know, I said I lost, like, 50-plus pounds on Atkins one time. And then I, you know, went back on it at a later time. And it was, for whatever reason, much harder. And it wasn't working. And it was much slower. And I... I there is a sort of toxic nostalgia to like looking back on a yeah. plan that worked. And here's a little clue. Here's a thing that people don't often want to hear. Ooh. If you were on a plan and you didn't stick to the plan, that plan didn't work for you. Yeah. Like the plan that works is the one that you can stick to. And the one, even if you change it up, like I have, I change up my plan all the time, but the basic fundamentals of counting calories and moving more than I eat are always the same. Even if you change it up, if you can't stay on it, if it's something that you're doing as a temporary fix, if you can only do it for a short amount of time, if you can only do it until you hit a certain weight and then you're right back off it again, that plan is not working and that's not the plan for you. Well, but I think conversely too, we can hold on to things that worked in a particular season of our life. Before oh, yeah. we were married, before we had kids, when we were in college, before we got the job, before we got the diagnosis, we can forget that when circumstances change, that the habits might need to change. And when we get stuck in, well, in 2016, you know, we were living by the beach and I was able to walk on the, you know, on the strand every right, day right. and there was a farmer's market and all this stuff. And then the circumstance changed. Our parents moved in with us. There was a financial crisis. You know, I lost my job. We adopted a child. Like, whatever it is, we can forget and be like, well, it was easier back then. It, you know, if I didn't have this to worry about, then it would be easy. Um, in actual real life, uh, America – uh, in 2021. <laughs> or or whatever country you live sure, in. Sure, <laughs> let's name all the countries. Um, I was laid off of my for my job of 23 years in January. Yeah. And it can be very easy to say, well, if I didn't have this crazy job, then it would be easy to lose weight. Right. If I didn't do that, then it would be easy. If I if I wasn't getting my master's degree, if my husband wasn't working so much, if my daughter, if I didn't have to drive my daughter to school, there's all these if then scenarios. When we realize that it's just what we put in our mouths. Like, like that's all. Right. It's what you put in your mouth and how much you move, and that's kind of it. But we can push, you know, the the can is the is it a can down the road? You can you kick the can, you kick you, the can, you push the bale of hay. Or sure, I don't know what you do with the. But push. we can say that if this was different, then it would be time. Oh, if you know, as soon as we buy the house, as soon as I finish grad school, as soon as our kid is out of school, as soon as it's fall, as soon as it's twenty twenty two, then it'll be time. Then I'll be ready. We become ready by doing the thing. It's not about motivation. It's about the momentum. But I think looking at that season is part of the nostalgia thing. Okay, circumstances have changed. How can I empower myself today to make a positive choice? Well, and saying to yourself that like, if I just, you know, didn't have to work this job or whatever that I that I could do it is is really invoking we've talked a lot on this show about loopholes. Oh, yeah. And it's it's really just invoking one of those loopholes. And that's another thing that people do all the time. Time is they invoke loopholes and they just sort of use them as an excuse to give up. Yeah. And, you know, saying things like, well, maybe this is just my body now. Like, you know, oh I'm, I'm just, this is just the weight I am. And so, you know, I'm just going to settle into it. Yep. I'm Polish. This is just what happens to my family when we get older. It's, I'm just a victim to, you know, my heritage. Yeah. And, and trust me, like you can change. If Catherine and I can, believe me, you can too. But I think, too, there's, you know, and we are we are doing this because we care about our bodies. Like, I just want to make it very clear. Oh, yeah. I honor the me of 145 pounds ago who was brave enough to make changes to take better care of herself. Well, and I honor her, too, because she, like, literally saved my life or probably literally saved my life. You know, I if you hadn't done what you did, I don't think I ever would have been able to do what I've done. And I am grateful to the you of 145. Me, we're just riding her coattails. Exactly. But that like body positivity and owning, you know, healthy at any size, we are not saying that there is a magical number that you need to achieve in order to be healthy or look, you know, this isn't about being skinny. This is about 
being the best version of yourself and not falling into those old loopholes of, well, aren't I supposed to accept my body the way it is? Aren't I just supposed to like accept the circumstances? And if we're, you know, suffering from ailments, or maybe we haven't hit the ailment part yet. Like I said, I had great blood work for so long, but I look back at pictures of myself from 145 pounds ago. I was not living my best life. Yeah. Like I could, I had to wait like 10 minutes to get out of bed in the morning because my feet hurt so bad. Yeah. And I was 30. Yeah. I was 30 years old and not being able to get out of bed. Yeah. And I maintained my terrible habits without any, you know, major consequences until I was about 35. And then again at 45, you know, with the heart problems around 35 and the the diabetes around 45. And, you know, I just kept telling myself, you know, I think that when I was younger, I had this idea that I was invincible and that, you know, well, that's not going to happen to me. Like, I don't have that problem. And I think a lot of people invoke that loophole. Well, and to if, you know, if you're listening to this, we have been focusing on regain after some loss, but there's also a portion of our listeners who may have never lost any weight at all, who might still be waiting to get gain that traction. And we can often say, I've never been successful in the past. Yeah. What makes me think that today is the day? What makes me think that the me of now is capable of doing this because I have had no proof before? And it's a really good excuse to use for yourself to do nothing because there was a large part of me that just wanted to do nothing. I look for excuses all the time to not actually follow a weight loss and fitness plan because it's not easy. We've tried to make it as painless as possible and to just make it part of our lifestyle, but it is still work. And and that is something that a lot of people don't want to hear, but you, you can't, there is no way to just do nothing and have it happen. But if Catherine and I after all of our years of of trying and failing and doing nothing and 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 failing and you know all of the things that we that we did and didn't work if we can turn it around i am confident that you can too because i don't know if there was anybody who was more lost than you and i yeah well and i think too you know in january of 2016 when i started this I wasn't focused on mindset and boundaries and growth mindset and yeah. gratitude and all of the mumbo jumbo that we espouse now. People all- just don't talk about that enough. Like they, you know, everybody just wants to, they want recipes and they yeah. want, they want, you know, to know, I want to know what exercise to do and what recipes to follow. And, and, you know, they just want to step by step, you know, kind of like a paint by numbers situation. And that's never going to last that you you have to really fundamentally change your mindset and your outlook and really like Catherine said work on things that you don't think about that are part of this like getting enough sleep and working on your boundaries and actually realizing that you do have time to do all of this stuff and it's all of the things that nobody talks about that are really the effective keys to making it happen well and two it's not the plan you know, it's not Weight Watchers, it's not keto, it's not intermittent fasting. None of it is this one thing. Oh, well, I can't afford to join Weight Watchers, so there's no way I can lose weight. If we're looking at an external plan or structure, we're not going to look internally to ourselves and fundamentally consider why this actually matters. So as we're sort of rounding this episode up, we've got more to say on it. But what we want to leave you with today is a question that we actually want you to ask yourself, which is what matters to you about your weight? Not society, not, you know, health standards, not whatever, but why does it matter to you? Yeah. What emotional limitations do you have that you don't even consider being a part of your weight issues? I had no idea that I was an emotional eater. No idea that I victimized myself at work and stress ate and revenge ate about all of the ways I thought my life was unfair. What physical limitations do you have that you don't even, like Donald was like, well, when you're 35, you're just tired all the time. Yeah. It never, that's he never what I genuinely thought. made the connection that his lifestyle was impacting 
like 35 so young looking back at it now i know oh it's ridiculous gosh. it felt old at the time but that's just crazy talk well and i when i was 30 i was twice as heavy as i am now and i'm like well this is just oh this is the way you go what happens when you're 30 right. yeah but what non-scale limitations do you have that you don't really even consider? Go through the next week and how many times, like I would go through turnstiles sideways because I couldn't fit through normally. I would go on airplanes and have to walk sideways down the aisle to get to my seat. I would have to hold my breath on airplanes and suck myself in because I couldn't put the tray table down. I would go to bathroom stalls and look for the disabled stall because I couldn't comfortably fit in the normal stall. I didn't even really, I was just sort of didn't really think that it was an issue. Yeah. Like, you know, wondering if seatbelts would buckle, wondering if I could get by in aisles of antique stores, like without actually bull in a china shop, knocking things over. Not even kidding you right now. There were all these little micro ways that I, not microwaves, micro waves, <laughs> that I was like self-conscious about myself that I didn't even realize were impacting the emotional health of my life. I used to just be worried about my vanity, about my looks. And as I've gotten older, I've realized it's not about that. I mean, sure, you know, it, it boosts self-confidence for me to be thinner. I won't deny that. But really, the victories are not about that. It's not that I'm ever going to be an underwear model or anything like that or or be the best, you know, looking person at the beach with my shirt off or anything like that. I don't care about any of that. What I care about is that I can still move well. I can still walk long distances, that I can walk upstairs without it killing me, that I don't have to take naps all the time. All of those things have just dramatic improve the quality of my life and I'm not worried about the vanity. So ask yourself, what is really important to you? Why do you want to do this? And what goals do you hope to achieve because of hitting your goal weight? Not, not just that the goal weight itself is the goal. Right. And I know for me too, I didn't have this giant perspective when I started losing weight. All I wanted to do was fit into the pants that I owned without my pants ripping. Like that's how it all started. I just wanted to lose five pounds so that I could fit into my clothes. It is, it never occurred to me back then that I had this entire landscape of my life to change. But starting there and really thinking why this matters to you, not, okay, well, I just need to lose 20 pounds and then it'll be over. But fundamentally, how am I going to live the best version of my life? I didn't even know all of this was possible. We still have, you know, many challenges. We have setbacks. We are, you know, impacted by the world around us. But the way we approach it is so much different. And like Donald said, if we can fundamentally change, we know you can. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your limitations. We can make changes. And I know you can too. Yes, indeed. So thank you so much for listening. I think next week, as a special preview, we're going to give you some hard-hitting advice on how to actually make this happen, how to start over, or if you're just starting for the first time, uh, how to really get going. But thank you so much for listening to this episode. Uh, we have many others you can listen to anywhere that you found this. And our episodes are also all available at weonlylookthin.com. Yep. And if you are at weonlylookthin.com, you can head over to the link that says join our support group. We have a support group based on Facebook called Wolt Place, We Only Look Thin Place. It is an accountability and support group for women. Just ladies. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Uh, sorry, guys, dudes. Guys, don't participate. Uh, but it is a small support group. We do three Zoom meetings a week uh, for members, uh, just sort of talking about issues just like this. This this uh, actual podcast episode was based on a Zoom meeting that we did in the group, uh, but it's a great place for accountability, support, check-ins, and inspiration from other people working on their health goals just like you. Yeah, we and you mentioned that you lost your, your job of 23 years back in January. You are now doing this full-time. This so, is my full-time so job. Like people have access to you all the time. And if you've ever thought to yourself, like, I would really like to get direct advice and have like be able to ask Catherine questions directly and get direct answers like that. This group 
you know, allows you to do that. Now, I'm super proud of what we are doing in the group. Uh, so you are welcome to come and check us out. We have actually two different subscription options, a monthly subscription with a three-day trial and a three-month subscription with a seven-day trial to see if Wolt Place is right for you. Yeah, so you get a little time to actually be in the group and figure out if it's actually what you want to do before you have to uh, to, to commit to it. So uh, why not? Give it a shot. Yep. And if you would like to reach us otherwise, you can go over to weonlylookthin at gmail.com. Send us an email with any questions that you have. Uh, it might take us a while to get back to you. We are busy folk doing busy work. Yeah. Uh, but send us uh, questions or episode ideas that you might have, and we will uh, we will get back to you. And you can also interact with us on the socials. We are at We Only Look Thin on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you uh, are an Apple subscriber, if you've got one of those eye things that people yeah, have. Or even if you don't, you can go to Apple Podcasts. Yeah, and uh, leave us a rating and review. Word of mouth really matters in helping boost our subscriber base and listenership. So if you head over to Apple Podcasts, give us five stars, leave us a rating and review. Uh, Apple relies on ratings and reviews to boost us uh, when people are doing searches for fitness and nutrition podcasts just like ours. And also, when you say nice things about us, it really, uh, it really helps our egos. It and, sure and does. And that's the most important thing when you really, uh, really think about it. <laughs> yeah, it burns calories. It sure does. So we made it. We got to Hooray, the end. We hey, did. the uh, the leaf blowers and the the chainsaws and all of that uh, didn't stop us. Yeah, there were also uh, police sirens, which uh, we did. We spared you from that because Donald edited it out. Thank you so much for editing this podcast, Donald. I'm going to thank future me because as I'm saying this, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> but as you're listening to it, I have. Have done it. It's all, it's a time loop. So if you still don't know the difference between the dulcet, relaxing tones of an ATV <laughs> and a chainsaw, <laughs> just remember that Catherine and I are an, an inspiration. inspiration. The information that you hear on this podcast is for informational purposes only. The hosts are not medical professionals. You should always consult with your doctor, nurse, or other certified health professional before beginning any diet or fitness program.